Hello and welcome to this presentation, Market Making and Use of Futures. In this example, we're going to look at how a market maker manages their physical position with the use of futures contracts. And in this particular example, we shall use the market for actual commodities. But the example that I'm going to go through can equally apply to whether we're making a market in equities or bonds or some other financial instrument. So let's just suppose that we have a farmer or a farmer's cooperative, say based in South America. And the farmer's cooperative contacts a market maker, a dealer in commodities. And the market maker is asked to quote a price to the cooperative, in which case the market maker says they would be prepared to pay 294 for the commodity and 296 to sell the commodity. Now, the market maker doesn't necessarily know whether the farmer's cooperative initially is in the business of selling commodities or buying. Hence, the market maker will always quote a two-way price. Notice that the spread is $2. Now we'll assume that this is the price per unit. Let's just imagine then that the farmer's cooperative on this occasion sells to the market maker. But do you notice that the market maker has an eye on the futures market at the same time as he is quoting the price to the farmer? The market maker knows that in the futures market, the future is trading at $300 bid and 301 offered. Now what the market maker is conscious of, that if he is hit on his physical side, he will lay the risk off on the futures market. So let's suppose that the farmer then decides to sell to the market maker. So the market maker now buys the physical commodity at 294. In other words, the farmer is long of the physical. And if you're long of the physical, you're worried about physical prices falling over the coming period. So to hedge that position, the market maker needs to sell futures contracts. In this example, he hits the bid in the futures market at $300. Now, let's suppose that uh, having done this trade, we move on. And a little while later, suppose that the market maker is approached by, on this occasion, a manufacturer, a roaster, a miller, a refiner, for example. And again, the market maker quotes a bit of a spread on the physical. And what we observe, as time has gone by, the physical prices in the market have fallen. And to be competitive, the market maker now has to quote a bit of a spread, but in a lower environment. In this case, he's quoting 274 bid and 276 offered. Let's suppose now the market maker, also noting the futures prices in the futures market at 279 bid, 280 offered. Let's suppose now that what happens is that the manufacturer decides to buy from the market maker. That means that the market maker has now sold at 276. And because the market maker no longer needs their futures contract, the market maker now will trade in the futures market at 280. Now, if you look at the market maker, he has no position because he's bought physical and sold physical. And he's also bought and sold futures contracts at the respective prices as shown. So we can see here that if you add up the prices in the physical market that he paid and received, 294 against 276, he will end up with a loss on his books at $18. However, on the futures contract, if we take the price of $300 set against 280, the market maker is going to make a futures profit of $20. So in this particular example then, the market maker is going to end up with a net profit of $2. So what this example illustrates then is how a market maker through the use of the futures markets can manage its physical position and at the same time lock in a profit. This of course can be likened to arbitrage because in a sense what we're seeing here is that when the market maker does a physical trade, he immediately lays the risk off in the futures markets and in doing so captures, in this case, a net profit of $2.